What's good, home skillets? Hasty bodaciousness. This is your new friend PDB, and I've been working on a game called Neo Virginia RPG for nearly three years, since May of 2016 AD. I've decided in this new year, 2019 AD, I want to get into the habit of uploading videos regularly, and while I've almost filled an entire wall of my place with post-it notes of ideas, most of them will require more forethought and deliberate planning than I can muster on this snowbound winter's evening. I figure the easiest place to start is to make a vid talking about a personal experience I've had and what I learned from it, and I've chugged enough Orange Bowl tonight to just jump into making this, and hopefully this will somehow transmute into some kind of calendrical muscle memory. Let me digress on you here for introduction's sake. If they'd told me in school that being able to write three essays a week and read them out in videos was a viable way to make a name for yourself, you would probably already be very familiar with me because I would have jumped on this train a thousand and one stops back. But that's neither here nor here. Long story short is, I have a double A in game design, and one time me and my buddies Dustin and Ben made a board game out of a bucket of water, and it won a national competition. Being struck speechless when we got an award thing for it at City Hall was actually a really strong motivator to get better at speaking. I'm... I'm speechless. <laughs> for once. For once I am speechless. And if you know me, that's not... often. <laughs> but it felt so good to be recognized for doing something cool that all the right words got stuck like crumbs in my dumb college beard that I've since shaved off. Well, I figured the internet website YouTube is a good way to develop my skills in talking about stuff. So the topic of this video is three lessons I learned developing one video game for nearly three years. That game is called Neo Virginia RPG. It's a cyberpunk JRPG, or CRPG, set in a post-apocalyptic Virginia, based on a Facebook page called Neo Virginia that was created by my buddies Reese and Miles. The Facebook page takes kind of a Vox Populi tone like Humans of New York, but ripping on cyberpunk and post-apoc fiction, and also weird stuff in modern Virginia. It's so richly detailed that I decided it'd make a great setting for a JRPG. I could really see it in my head. Now as I was walking home from the bus stop on May 17th, 2016 AD, a very pleasant and sunny day, I was thinking about how in ancient times video games had to fit on a rinky dink cartridge, and so as the website Flying Omelette pointed out, the known world in your typical classic JRPG is at most 30 minutes across on a bike, and your job is to defend about 100 people who each have one good thing to say against infinite monsters. Whereas in modern open world RPGs, the game world can be, like, truly enormous. I had been thinking about that guy who walks across maps and how Just Cause 2's map takes like 11 and a half real world hours to cross. So I decided that a truly novel innovation in today's world would be to combine the modern open world experience with the retro JRPG aesthetics, and that a game set in Neo Virginia ought to be to scale with the real life state of Virginia, West Virginia, and Kentucky. So I stopped on the sidewalk to send my buddy Miles a message about it, and he said it would be rad as hell. And I created the Unity project that evening. Lesson number one is that deciding my game's scope before designing any of the mechanics was a really ballsy maneuver, and I don't recommend that you do it. The worst case scenario of doing something like this is probably this info I learned from this video by Fact Fiend with Carl Smallwood. Apple would decide on the dimensions of a new computer before designing any of the internal components, leading to failures like the Apple III. Fact Fiend's a great channel, by the way, worth your trust. Nevertheless, I am sticking to my guns on this decision. It was the first decision I made about the game. To this day, I am committed to and enamored by the idea of a top-down, retro-aesthetic JRPG that is the size of freaking Daggerfell or something. Deciding on the scope first also did have the benefit of setting a hard upper limit on scope creep, and it informed tons of future decisions about the gameplay and mechanics and the world design and where things are related in relation to each other and how to travel around the world, and so on. That's where side projects come into play, like that time I wrote a program to encode Google Maps into pixel art bitmaps that I could use to place the coastline in the game world, because the Potomac is a pretty big feature there, and how doing that eventually fried either the RAM or my boot sector in my Win 10 PC, and I'm still not sure which one it was, because the blasted thing won't even boot with a USB boot drive now. Lesson number two is that the stuff the player sees in the game is actually really superficial. Part of the idea here is that superficial details are easier to churn out day by day. It's easier to make cool pixel art cutscenes than it is to program a robust combat system, and that easiness is a trap. I fooled myself into thinking I was making progress because I was making anything at all, when what I was making was very superficial. Sprite art, music, special effects, even the UI. 
These are not the core of the gameplay proper. Every time I get a new idea into my head, I have to fight the urge to implement it immediately, even if it would be easy to do, because it detracts from programming the main core of the game, and ultimately it's an interactive computer program. Uh, Short-term gratification is so tempting. Now that I've recognized this problem, I definitely want to program the combat system to full robusticity so that I can see whether it actually works and feels the way I want it to, whether it's actually fun, uh, before I start putting tons of assets and special effects on top of it. The combat system is still, like, barely there. I know what it's supposed to be now, but it's barely there. As my buddy Steven Astuni said, so many newer JRPGs are all flash and dazzle piled atop an empty void. It's an issue that can be avoided through proper planning. Defo, you should check out Steven Astuni's YouTube channel as well. He makes really cute 3D animations. Honestly, the code for Neo Virginia RPG has gotten really spaghetti and convoluted, but in struggling through and refining the experience over the past two and some odd years, I understand what the game is actually supposed to be so much better now. So in the coming weeks, I will begin the task of creating the game anew, one module at a time. So I'm not building on top of layer on top of layer of defunct code like it's the city of Troy. Almost all of the assets I've already made will be the same, you know, sunk cost fallacy. But the production experience and so on will hopefully be tighter and more efficient now that I know what I'm aiming for with such greater clarity. So lesson number three is to know what I am making. And now that I'm remaking the game from scratch, one module at a time, I'd like to organize the process in terms of dependencies and necessities. So the most necessary, most basal stuff, upon which everything else relies, is what I do first. A test scene for every mechanic and every feature is a good idea. And then I can integrate them into each other later. A very modular design approach would help to ensure that things work independently and then work together. I want the minimum viable product to feel solid, you know? And then I can pile pizzazz on top of a system that has actual substance. This article from GameGrate talks about how JRPG combat should be a puzzle at its heart, and I've been thinking about that a lot now. And it doesn't need to be specifically menu-based, and in my case, it's almost certainly not going to be. I do have a really cool idea, and uh, I really hope that someday you're going to be able to play it. And this last one, it's not a lesson I've learned specifically with regards to making this game, but I've learned that it is invaluable to keep a journal on me at all times. It doesn't need to be a daily journal like a diary or a log of progress or whatever. A lot of what I write down is noticing that two songs sound similar, like a Wait a Million Years by The Grassroots and Rasputin by Boney M. They sound kind of similar. But yeah, just always carrying something to write with and something to write on is a fantastic thing. Thanks, Mr. Sumeria, now I can store memories outside of my head. And writing constantly has also improved my handwriting, which is pretty cool. So the long and short of it is that the game still has a long way to go. The last build, because I focused so much effort on aesthetics over substance, is basically limited to the intro sequence going from booting up the game executable to the main menu screen to actually loading a new game and entering the game world and then after that there's basically nothing you can move around and open the menus and change the angle of the sun which makes the shadows move around i thought that was pretty cool it's not really what i would call playable and it's not representative of the final product i have in mind but now I have a better idea of where to focus my efforts. And instead of just meandering along an arbitrary path, driven by passing whimsies, now that I know what I'm making, and I know what the core of the gameplay is, and I know what decisions I have to make in order to design this game effectively, I feel like I've cut the remainder of the development time in half compared to what it would have otherwise been had I not realized that I really needed to refactor my development process if I ever want this game to see the light of day. It's been nearly three years since I started programming this game, and the game looks a lot better than it first did, and I've made a lot of solid headway in designing major features of the game, but I actually just need to get down to brass tacks and start programming, and coding, and putting these things into practice. A modular design approach, I believe, will help me succeed, and will help me design the game that I know I want to make. Neo Virginia is real. 
Neo Virginia is here, and Neo Virginia is within you already. So be sure to subscribe and gently caress that like button if you want to see more epic content like this. Uh, thanks for tuning in. Have a fantastic day. I'm Peter Daniel Berg, and I'll see you next time.